All right, I guess I'll take some time, read a, a few articles, little tidbits here and there, while you watch me do it. <laughs> Concerning rumors and at least one story that's absolutely true. So uh, here, of course, a lot of speculation uh, about, yeah, Gal Gadot would also uh, no longer be Wonder Woman, and I suspect that's probably true. Uh, and then the latest was, well, who would replace her? And uh, apparently uh, this name came up, uh, I'm someone I'm not familiar with, but is it Isa or Isa Gonzalez? And, uh, you know, pretty girl, uh, wouldn't mind it. And, uh, you know, as much as I enjoyed Gal Gadot and wish she could have continued um, within that cast, but if you're going to do a full-on reboot, it should be a full-on reboot. Of course, James Gunn's characters from Peacemaker and Suicide Squad will continue. <laughs> I would rather they just wrap up Peacemaker off on its own and uh, consider that done and uh, then move forward with your stuff. But, well, things are what they are. Uh, of the original cast, it's more than likely, Jason Momoa uh, coming back as Lobo uh, is what will happen. As for the uh, characters themselves of the Justice League, uh, they'll all be new uh, because they'll be new and cheaper. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those things. Don't like it, but I respect it considering the situation they're in. So this comes from uh, fan spotted a social media post where uh, I guess Isa Gonzalez responded to a Wonder Woman image posted by James Gunn from the comics. Happy Wonder Woman Day, posted Gunn. Uh, this image is the one, commented Gonzalez. The image is cover art for Wonder Woman 38. So here we have the image. You know, she's got her God of War helmet and that sort of thing. And she responds, this image is the one. So the idea of her uh, being possibly in consideration, and then she responds to this image. And, uh, oh, is that him liking that she said that? or uh, uh, Anyway, um so there you go. There's that. The only thing on the Wonder Woman front announced by a gun was this TV series of Paradise Lost uh, about Themyscira and a Game of Thrones of the Amazons and all that. And that Wonder Woman herself more than likely would not appear. And uh, how long would it be before you get back to Wonder Woman uh, after you do a series like that when there's been no announcement of any of the other characters? Green Lantern gets a TV series. Uh, Batman gets a movie. Superman, of course, gets one. And then that's pretty much it. And there's been some other projects, and like Booster Gold would get a show and stuff like that. But as far as the main top stars, uh, Wonder Woman doesn't get one, at least not yet. Uh, so if they're in talks with her, uh, I, I'm dubious she would appear in that show, but uh, maybe she would. Uh, but maybe she's the one narrating the history of it or something. I don't know. Um, so anyway, she liked the image, and so this gives some amount of credence to the idea that she may be uh, the DCU's Wonder Woman. Um, so again, um, I don't know much about her. I don't know her acting prowess or any of that stuff, but, uh, uh, you know, she's lovely and all that. And uh, it's sad about Gal Gadot having to move on. Um, but uh, I understand the position they're in, and it's not entirely the new regime's fault. Uh, it's the previous one who screwed up so badly. And um, But uh, may, this may never come to anything, because if Superman Legacy uh, crashes and burns, that's it. I don't think there will be an attempt at a shared universe, certainly not cinematically. Uh, maybe cartoon. Oh, well, obviously the cartoons and stuff, they've always been doing that. And uh, and then they just move on with Batman movies <laughs> like they used to, which is probably how Marvel will end up uh, with Spider-Man movies. And then that's it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but when you screw up that badly, uh, it happens, and these things are very expensive, and uh, you have to deal with uh, reality of the math. Another thing that I don't particularly like the situation, but I can respect reality because, you know, you kind of have to. Okay, not kind of. You have to. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, this story uh, is like, uh, oh, this is a Grace Randolph uh, poll and that they're saying Thor Love and Thunder is what broke Marvel's back. 
Uh, no, I think there was quite a lot of damage along the way, but if you're going to say that, that this is the straw, uh, that it was one thing too many, uh, Quantum Mania, I don't think, really belongs here. It, it's nowhere near as bad as uh, Love and Thunder. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. And She-Hulk, <laughs> She-Hulk is peak absurdity. But Thor Love and Thunder is close, considering it had Thor in it, and that it was a, a movie that actually had a very serious and dark storyline to it, but it never had a chance to breathe. I mean, and it, it insulted itself because every other second there was another dumb joke thrown in. And it, uh, the humor overwhelmed what Marvel had built where they became convinced that was the secret sauce to its success. And it really wasn't. Uh, and it, to the point that you, you disrespect your own property like that and the audience bailed. Um, I mean, you had his girlfriend, he gets reunited with her, but she's dying. And, and then stupid plot holes where he could have saved her. I mean, he had basically God right there. <laughs> they, they don't do it. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah she lives on as uh, Valkyrie or something, but I mean, come on. Um, and Secret Invasion, yeah. <laughs> she all probably got more in attention than Secret Invasion did. Uh, it was just, you know, you, you could sleep through it. Uh, and to your She-Hulk, well, at least you're angry, you know. <laughs> so, um, I guess Love and Thunder is as good as any, uh, because it had one of the main original stars just <laughs> completely broken and humiliated, uh, along with everyone else in it, really. You know, it was just trash. So, it's sad. But, um, so, I'll, yeah, I, you know, I'd say this is what did it. Uh, I think it's all of the above in a lot of ways meanwhile don't worry the marvels are coming <laughs> to save the day uh, highly unlikely uh, but now there's this stuff that uh, Kevin Feige is desperate uh, to give it something and usually they always talk about the uh, the the end credit scene oh man you gotta you gotta check this out so he's going through the different rumors and stuff about their uh, freaking out over the estimated uh, box office opening uh, because the pre-sales of tickets are not doing so great and all that sort of thing so oh no oh no well uh, what do you do to get some excitement going so he says what's the last minute surprise well it involves deadpool and wolverine and all that well uh matt mcgloin says here from what i've heard the marvels isn't about the multiverse at all to be honest i don't really know what it's about <laughs> <laughs> Some of the characters find a magic brazen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the rumor going around is that now Kefeige has connected the Marvels to both Deadpool 3 and Avengers Secret Wars. Deadpool 3 has been said to be basically a direct tie-in to Avengers Secret Wars in that it's this whole multiverse thing that takes place in, uh, within the film. Uh, and then you have uh, Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. So my guess is he'll also make an appearance in Secret Wars. But uh, his main... You know, arrival is in Deadpool. So Deadpool travels to the Fox Marvel Universe, which eventually leads to them in... I thought he was in the Fox Marvel you know. Anyway, uh, leads them to ending up in the MCU and Avengers Secret Wars. Owen Wilson and the TVA are also said to be involved. So we see how it all connects. So, um, okay, so the idea is that uh, regarding the Marvels again from my understanding is that the movie doesn't connect to the multiverse but the rumors say Feige has added a post credit scene in the Marvels that will connect to Deadpool 3 and Avengers Secret Wars so that would give some amount of excitement from scrolling through Twitter one tweet said it's Kelsey Grammer's Beast from the Fox X-Men movies so if true we could see uh, we, that we see that it connects to Deadpool 3 and sort of Avengers Secret Wars if not true assume nothing similar <laughs> Something similar, meaning uh, some kind of connection, whether it's the beast or what. Uh, update. Well, yeah, this is a question that immediately comes to mind. <laughs> Just thought of something. How did Feige find a scene, uh, add a scene as the actors are on strike? Unless it's a scene from Deadpool 3 that already has been filmed. That's possible, and they just tease it. Oh boy, there's there's an end credit scene with Deadpool. Oh, and it's just some scene they cut out of that out of Deadpool's film and stuck it in there. More than likely, unless unless they got some uh, uh, exemption from the strike <laughs> to film, you know, uh, five or well, not five minutes, a, a minute of footage uh, for uh, the Marvels. Um, 
but <laughs> it wouldn't be enough, I don't think, um, because the brand is just uh, disintegrating right in front of you. Editor's note, Jeremy from the Quartering does not have permission to use this <laughs> Apparently there's <laughs> some spat between the two. <laughs> I don't know. But, but anyway, uh, so that's uh, his take on this. And uh, the uh, what can you lend credibility to it if he can do it? Would he do it? Yes, he would. Uh, because the film cannot stand on its own. And... Uh, the, the, all of a sudden throw that in there and, and uh, tell people it would have been something that apparently uh, you know from the test screens it wasn't there so they stick it in there and this happens it's just the strike really uh, messes this up I mean obviously they're you know they're shoving things into the flash at the last minute didn't do it any good <laughs> so this is, probably wouldn't do much good either but anyway there you go uh, yes, he would want to do it, I would think, but but did he have the opportunity, and uh, does he have it now? It doesn't sound like it, and the strike's still going, so, um, and I mean, boy, that would, you would really have to swap that in there pretty quick. Anyway, yeah. So, meanwhile, speaking of Marvel elsewhere, uh, here's a story about the Fantastic Four, which odds are they're going to ruin this. <laughs> How many ways? Well, possibly female Silver Surfer. Now, is that the Galactus will show up in the story? And he, but instead of the Silver Surfer, he would have a female hero. Well, the Silver Surfer is male. Uh, but would he be a gender swap? Well, right off the bat, they thought maybe they'll swap him out with just the Frankie Ray Nova character. Uh, and if you remember the John Byrne run that she was. Johnny Storm's girlfriend, and then she wanted to be uh, Galactus's Herald, and then she's transformed into uh, Nova here, and um, and uh, she was, you know, similar to Silver Surfer, except she's gold, and she doesn't have a uh, surfboard, <laughs> but she uh, has a lot of fire and all that. So, um, but then. Yeah, McGloin says, wait a minute, what if it's, <laughs> which sounds like the type of thing they would do. Uh, so, hey, you can have both <laughs> in one character, and she gets the surfboard and all that. Uh, wouldn't care for that at all. I, and the, the, the Galactus story uh, from the Fantastic Four is one of the big stories from Fantastic Four lore, and to just mess with it like that, uh, and the, the chances are it won't be any recognizably uh, Fantastic Four at all. And they will ruin it, uh, just as they've been ruining everything. Um, so chances are you're not going to get a good Fantastic Four movie. And yet, a well-done one, especially uh, if they hold off after they do their reboot. Fantastic Four is the type of uh, done what right could save them, could give them an, a, a lease on life, you know? for the franchise but just the way things are and the way they've been going highly unlikely so something of this nature probably takes place again he explains that uh, Nova has nothing to do with the Nova Corps <laughs> and the Richard Ryder Nova character <laughs> which they teased in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy but so far they haven't really done anything there's been rumors about some development on that but uh, probably not so anyway, uh, there you go, and they say they do have a cast for the film, and the director, Shackman, says uh, they'll announce it once the strike is over, which, uh, well, uh, isn't over yet. So finally, something that is absolutely true is Doctor Who is coming to DP, <laughs> Disney+. Plus, <laughs> And uh, so, uh, yeah, nothing really new here, just some posters and whatnot, and of course the titles being uh, The Star Beast, be the first show that they do for the specials in the well next month really uh and wild blue yonder and finally the giggle tee hee uh so here's some posters of uh the doctor and donna uh and uh her daughter <laughs> the new rose <laughs> and they're all standing in a green screen room you know and posing and stuff and uh these guys. Uh, then another one. Oh, look. Yeah, a cute little robot in the background in another green screen room. 
uh, with the doctor's magic outfit that magically appeared and regenerated with him. <laughs> it is cool they brought back the coolest logo from the Doctor Who uh, franchise, you know. Um, and uh, But I don't know that that actually shows a sign of things returning and getting better and all that. would like to think so. And uh, here we got Doogie Hauser along with, uh, again, Donna and the Doctor uh, in, a, in the green screen room. Um, uh, so, and, uh, it does say, uh, oh yeah. Okay. So they would go ahead, went ahead and leaked that, uh, it would say, Hey, was he the celestial toy maker? He's the celestial toy maker. So there you go. Apparently the celestial toy maker can change his appearance as well. And why not? He's practically God, isn't he? Or something like that. <laughs> and then, oh boy. Well, even if you thought, well, you know, maybe there's some hope for just, you know, if, it, if they just keep it as a basic adventure and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, they decided to have Loki writer Kate Heron. Yeah. From season one. And, uh, and that was the thing about Loki. They're saying, Hey, we're, we're, we're channeling doctor who, because, well, it's this British guy who kind of, you know, he's a tall, skinny guy, kind of like David Tennant. You know, he could have been Loki, too, you know, <laughs> and all that. And uh, and he travels through time. See, same show entirely. So, oh, boy, she says, clearly, I can't get enough of time travel. It's an absolute honor to write for Russell and Shooty. So in the Shooty Got What series, she's going to write uh, one of the stories. Uh, uh, says, well, it is, she's going to write on the show. I, uh, oh no, uh, brought along a friend, uh, uh, Brioni Redmond, uh, to co-write, you know, so you can't even do it on your own. <laughs> so they're going to write, uh, an episode for, uh, Shooty Got Was Doctor. So, uh, considering I thought Loki was a, uh, was a bit of a failure, um, this doesn't, uh, inspire, uh, any, uh, positivity on it. Uh, but then there's other episodes, so maybe that'll be the low one, and then the others might not be half bad, but extremely dubious on, on that level. So anyway, there you go. Uh, you get some new posters um, for Doctor Who and his three specials for the 60th anniversary. And then uh, poor Shooty Gatwa gets stuck with a Loki rider. <laughs> uh, but, well... Time will tell. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. There's a little wrap up of some stories I took interest in and uh, looked at them while you watched me look at them. Yeah, that's exactly what just happened. 